All praises be to the most high God, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Peace to you in the mighty name of Jesus. I count it truly a blessing any time that I can stand before you and deliver God's word. I never counted the light thing to do so. Today's lesson is entitled, Israel, thou hast played the harlot with many lovers, and return unto me, saith the Lord. This holy Bible that we hold so dear, is, the vast majority of it is about the relationship between God and his people. God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the people of Israel. And when we read, we find that it is likened unto the relationship of that between a man and his wife. Just like a marriage, a proposal was made and accepted. He proposed a covenant to his bride. He asked for her obedience and in exchange would make her a peculiar treasure unto him above all the people of the earth. She agreed. She spoke the words, all that the Lord has said we will do and be obedient. In other words, I do. But this relationship was not or has not been one of marital bliss. From the very beginning, she has been unfaithful. After a mighty deliverance from bondage, after being dead with gold of the Egyptians, she committed adultery. She took the gold that was given to her by her God, by her husband, and fashioned a golden calf. And after it was fashioned, said, these be the gods that brought us out of the land of Egypt. In other words, this is my husband. It is as if a woman who was in destitution and poverty and married, to a, married a man in wealth, a righteous man who provided this woman with everything she could desire. And then she goes out. She goes out and commits adultery with another man and gives that man all the treasures and wealth that her husband hath bestowed upon her. And this is what Israel has done, and this has not been a single event. Jeremiah writes, he asks the question, how canst thou say I am not polluted? He likens Israel to a swift dromedary in heat, or a beast in heat. He says, all that seek her will not weary themselves. In her month, they shall find her. In other words, Israel has been in spiritual adultery, spiritual whoredom with all the false gods of the earth. And because of her insatiable desire for false worship and idolatry, her husband has stripped her of her earrings the bracelets, the jewels, the silk, the wealth, the security, and has cast her out of his house. So here we sit as a woman in shame outside of the promised land, a target of our enemies, a prey, a byword, and a proverb of those that hate us. During the course of this lesson, we shall see the proposal, the vows, the acceptance, and the infidelity. We shall see the consequence for spiritual adultery. We shall see the enduring mercy of the Lord, because after all that this woman has done, his wife, the Lord shall take her unto himself once again and marry her once more. Finally, we shall see how we must prepare ourselves for this way. Soon the bridegroom shall come forth from his chamber. Will you be ready? Again, the title is, Israel, thou hast played the harlot with many lovers, and return unto me, saith the Lord. And we're going to start off in the 105th Division of Psalms. 105th Division of Psalms. Let me apologize now. I ran out of copies. So I'll keep that in mind as we proceed. Psalms, the 105th Division, beginning at verse 23. Psalms, the 105th Division, beginning at verse 23. When you're there, you can go ahead. Israel also came into Egypt, uh -huh. and Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham. So Israel came into Egypt. All the sons of Jacob, all the ones that came out of the loins of Jacob were 70, for Joseph was in Egypt already. It says Israel also came into Egypt, and Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham. They came into the land of Egypt, and they dwelt in Goshen. But go ahead. Verse 27. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Well, you know what, Skip? Let's read through 24. Go ahead. And he increased his people great. Uh -huh. So he increased these people from approximately 75 people to hundreds of thousands of people. Go ahead. And made them stronger than their enemies. They were a threat to the Egyptians. They became something that the Egyptians worried about because they were growing exceedingly. Go ahead. He turned their heart to hate his people. He, the Lord, turned their heart to hate his people. Because out of all that they had to go through, he was going to bring something that was glorious unto them.
to these people. Go ahead. To deal with some chili with this sir. Uh-huh. Because they planned to kill all the males that were born. They were going to keep the women, the made, made children, the female children, but they would kill the boys to suppress them, to suppress their growth. But go ahead. He sent Moses to serve an Aaron whom he had chosen. But he sent to them a deliverer. He said he sent Moses his servant and Aaron whom he had chosen. Go ahead. He showed his signs among them uh -huh. and wonders in the land of Ham. So he brought the plagues upon the mightiest nation in the world at that time. Go ahead. What did he start off with? He sent darkness uh -huh. and made it dark. Go ahead. And he rebelled not against his word. Go ahead. He turned the waters into blood. So what did he do? He turned the, the waters into blood. And did what to their fish? And slew their fish. Uh huh. Go the ahead. land brought forth frogs in abundance uh -huh. in the chambers of their king. And all these plagues were assigned against the gods of Egypt, showing the Egyptians that your gods are no gods. I am the living God. Go ahead. Verse 36. Uh huh. He smote also all the firstborn in their land. So he went through these ten plagues, and the last plague was the death of the firstborn of man and beast. He smote all the firstborn in the land, the chief of all their strength. Go ahead. He brought them forth also with silver and gold. Now he brought them out with a mighty hand, stretched that arm, and fury poured out, and then he spoiled the Egyptians. They gave them their earrings, their bracelets, their jewels, rushing the children of Israel out of the land. He brought them forth also with silver and gold, and there was what? And there was not one feeble person among their tribe. Not one feeble person among them, because the Lord was their strength. Go ahead. Egypt was glad when they departed. Egypt was happy when they got out of the land. He said, if they don't leave, we'd be all but dead men. So they are happy when they left. And did what? And what happened? For the fear of them fell upon them. The fear of them. Fell upon them. This is a slave, but they are empowered by the Creator now. For so the fear of these people fell upon them. Now all of Israel's enemies are afraid. Go ahead. He spread a cloud for a covering. Uh huh. And fire to give light in the night. I'm gonna be with you in the night and in the day. He spread a cloud for a covering and fire to give light in the night. He was with them. Go ahead. The people asked. Uh -huh. He brought quails. They asked, "Can he give us meat in the wilderness?" And what did he do? He brought quails and did what? And satisfied them with the bread of heaven. He sustained them in the wilderness with bread, manna from heaven. When they saw it, they didn't know what it was, but it was their nourishment. Go ahead. He opened the rock and waters gushed out. They thirsted. They thirsted. And in the wilderness, the Lord had Moses smote the rock and waters gushed out. They ran in the dry places like a river. Go ahead. For he remembered his holy promise uh -huh. and Abraham his servant. Uh -huh. And he brought forth his people with joy uh -huh. and his chosen with glad. So he remembered because he made a covenant with Abraham. He said, walk before me and be thou perfect. He said, and your seed shall be a great nation like the stars of heaven. See, this God that we serve, he proved himself to us even before he proposed like a man should do. When he wants to marry a woman, he needs to prove himself. This is God proving himself, delivering us, delivering us out of our terrible situation, saving us, and then providing for us. He remembered his holy promise in Abraham, his servant. He brought forth his people with joy and his chosen with gladness. And then what did he do? He gave them the lands of the heathen. Uh -huh. They inherited the labor of the people. He gave them the lands of the heathen, those that didn't know God. The Amorites, the Hittites, the Jebusites, all of the Canaanites, those Hamitic nations that were in the land of Canaan. He gave them their land. And they inherited their land. They did all the work. And Israel got the proceeds. Verse 45. That they might observe his statutes and keep his law. But it was contingent on their obedience to him. Love, honor, and obey. So he proved himself before he proposed. Now let's go to the proposal. Let's go to Exodus, the 19th chapter. Exodus, the 19th chapter. And hear the words of Moses. Exodus the 19th chapter and the third verse. Exodus the 19th chapter 
and the third verse. When you're there, you can go. And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, uh -huh. Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and mm -hmm. tell the children of Israel. So this is God speaking to the deliverer whom he sent. And what did he say? You have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bear you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. So you've seen what I've done for you. I proved myself. He said, you have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, the mightiest nation on the planet. And how I bear you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. Now what? Now therefore, uh -huh. if you will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant. Now if you will obey my voice, so he's proposing now. He's on one, one bending knee, so to speak. He said, now therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant. Go ahead. Then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me, uh -huh. above all people, for all the earth is mine. And that's what a man is doing when he's proposing. <laughs> he's saying he's going to do something. He says, so he says, Obey my voice indeed, and I'll make you a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. Who else better than to have marry you? The one that is the creator of heaven and earth. But go ahead. And you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests, a uh -huh. holy nation. These are the conditions of the covenant. Go ahead. These are the words that thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. So Moses, you go and tell these people the conditions of this Propose this marriage, if you will. Go ahead, verse 7. And Moses came and called for the elders of the people uh -huh. and laid before their faces all these words which the Lord commanded him. So the Lord, as intercessor between Israel and God, he came to them. He called the leaders of the people and he told them what thus saith the Lord. He laid it all out. This is the proposal that he's made. Go ahead. And all the people answered together. What they said? And said, all that the Lord has spoken, we will do. Uh -huh. And Moses returned the words of the people unto the Lord. So, he came, he gave a proposal, and they accepted. They said, all that the Lord has spoken, we will do. Just like a man when he gets on one knee nowadays, and he says, will you marry me? And the woman, she has a proposal, she said, I do. So that's what happened. And Moses returned the words of the people unto the Lord. All right, so now they are betrothed now to be married. Verse 9. And the Lord said unto Moses, uh -huh. Lord, I come unto thee in a thick cloud, Go ahead. that the people may hear when I speak with thee, uh -huh. and believe thee forever. And Moses told the words of the people unto the Lord. So I'm coming to marry you. Go ahead, verse 10. And the Lord said unto Moses, uh -huh. Go unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow. And let them wash their clothes. But you can't just come any type of way. Clean yourself up. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow and let them wash their clothes. This is God. So he says, Hey, you can't come any kind of way. You need to clean yourself up. Verse 11. And be ready against the third day. Well, what's going to happen? For the third day the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people uh -huh. upon Mount Sinai. So I'm coming down upon Mount Sinai. And I'm going to marry you. Let's go to Exodus the 24th chapter. Exodus the 24th chapter. Exodus the 24th chapter. Because here we see the vows of the wedding. We're starting at verse 1. Exodus the 24th chapter. And verse 1. And when you're there, you can go ahead. And he said unto Moses, uh -huh. Come up unto the Lord. Thou and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, uh -huh. and seventy of the elders of Israel, and worship you afar off. Uh -huh. And Moses alone shall come near the Lord, but they shall not come now, neither shall the people go up with him. Uh -huh. And Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord, uh -huh. and all the judgments, and all the people answered with one voice, and said... So they get the vows now. Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord. He laid it out, and all the judgments... What's going to, or the ordinances, what's going to happen when you do thus? The consequences, the sin. And all the people answered with one voice and said, what? All the words which the Lord had said will be do. Just again, like if you see a wedding, they'll say the vows. And the wife or the bride will say, I do. Verse 4. 
And Moses wrote all the words of the Lord. Uh -huh. And rose up early in the morning. And did what? And built an altar under the hill. Uh -huh. And twelve pillars according to the twelve tribes of Israel. So now he's going to consummate this marriage. He said, and Moses wrote all the words of the Lord and rose up early in the morning and built an altar under the heap. That altar is for sacrifice unto the Lord. And see, that's the, the relationship that they have for God and his people. It is through worship. And Moses wrote all the words of the Lord and rose up early in the morning and built an altar. Under the hill. Again, he's going to consummate this. Go ahead. Verse 5. And he sent young men of the children of Israel, uh -huh. which offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen unto the Lord. So now they are sacrificing all these animals unto God. Go ahead. And what they do? And Moses took half of the blood. He took the blood. Go ahead. And put it in basins. Uh -huh. And half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. So he took the blood. Again, you don't have covenant if you don't have blood. And Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins, and half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. And did what? And he took the book of the covenant uh -huh. and read in the audience of the people. Uh -huh. And they said, all that the Lord had said will we do. Now we read this three times. They are committed now, or so they say. But they are married one to another. He took the book of the covenant and read in the audience of the people. And they said, all that the Lord has said, will we do? Go ahead. And be obedient. Uh, and be obedient. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people uh -huh. and said, behold the blood of the covenant. Behold the blood of the covenant. Again, you don't have a covenant if you don't have blood. Go ahead. Which the Lord had made with you uh -huh. concerning all these words. Concerning all these words. Just to show you that even in a physical marriage, it's blood in that covenant between a man and his wife. Go to Deuteronomy, the 22nd chapter. And we'll see that blood is a sign of the covenant of marriage, physically and spiritually. Deuteronomy 22 and verse 13. Deuteronomy 22 and verse 13. Deuteronomy 22 and verse 13. And when you're there, you can go ahead. If any man take a wife and go in unto her uh -huh. and hate her. So if any man take a wife and she displeases him, go ahead. And give occasion to speech against her. Uh -huh. And break up an evil name upon her and say. Now he's saying that this woman is not right. He said give occasions of speech against her and bring up an evil name upon her. Evil and infamous name, meaning she's not a man. Go ahead. I took this woman when I came to her. Uh -huh. I found her not a man. He says, I took this woman and she was not a virgin. I married, I made the proposal, the vows, we got married, and then to consummate the marriage, and I find she is not a virgin. Go ahead. Then yeah. with the fathers, what should he do? And then shall the father of the dams. Then shall the father of the dams, who gave this a woman to be this man's wife, what should he do? And her mother, and take, her mother. Go ahead. take and bring forth the tokens of the damsel's virginity. The tokens or the signs of the damsel's virginity is that blood on that marriage cloth when that marriage was consummated. See, that's the blood of that covenant. Again, you don't have a covenant unless you have blood. Go ahead. Unto the elders of the city in the gate. Uh -huh. And the damsel's father shall say unto the elders, uh -huh. I gave my daughter unto this man to wife, and, and he hated her. And he hated her. So he didn't, he was displeased with her, so now he's telling lies. Go ahead. And lo, he had given occasion to speech against her, saying, I found not thy daughter a man. Uh -huh. And yet these are the tokens of my daughter's virginity. He said, look, this man has said he's brought... Uh, he's brought disdain on my family name upon my daughter. He said she was not a maid, and yet here are the signs of her virginity. Go ahead. And they shall spread the cloth before the elders. He spread it before the elders so they can judge. So in this case, this wife was innocent. But in our case, we are not innocent. We are guilty. Let's go to Exodus the 32. Because, 32nd chapter, excuse me, because from the very beginning, Israel has been unfaithful. Exodus, the 32nd chapter. 
Exodus the 32nd chapter. Exodus the 32nd chapter and we'll start at verse 15. Or verse 1, excuse me. Exodus the 32nd chapter and verse 1. Exodus 32 and verse 1. Because this is not long after she said several times, all that the Lord has said will we do and be obedient. Exodus 32 and verse 1, we are there, go ahead. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mountain. So now Moses is communing with God. He's getting instruction from God. He was up in the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. What happened? Go ahead. The people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him. So they put pressure on Aaron. Go ahead. Up, make us gods. Uh -huh. We shall go before us. Uh -huh. For as far as is Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we were not what has become of him. So we don't know what's become of this Moses. Make us some gods. Let's commit adultery. And Aaron obliged them. Go ahead. And Aaron said unto them, uh -huh. Break off the golden earrings uh -huh. which are in the ears of your wives, uh -huh. of your sons, and of your daughters, Go ahead. and bring them unto me. Uh -huh. And all the people broke off the golden earrings which were in their ears, uh -huh. and brought them unto Aaron. So they brought all this gold unto Aaron, and then what did they do? And he received them at their hand and fashioned it with the graving too, uh -huh. after he had made it a molten calf. And he said, These be the gods of Israel. This is your new husband that did what? Which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. But we know that's the lack because we read that God brought them out of Egypt with a mighty hand, with stretched out arm, with fury poured out. We read what he did and how he brought the plagues upon Egypt. We read how he was sustaining them in the wilderness. So they said, These be the gods that brought thee up out of, out of the land of Egypt. Verse 5. And when Aaron saw it, uh -huh. he built an altar before it. So now he's going to consummate a marriage with this other. But really, it's just adultery because you already married. He said, and when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. Just like they had done to the Lord. And Aaron made a proclamation and said, tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. But you are already married. Go to uh, verse 7. When you're there, go ahead. And the Lord said unto Moses. The Lord said unto Moses because he's omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent, knows all, sees all, and is all powerful. So the Lord said unto Moses, go what? Go get thee down for thy people which thou brought us up out of the land of Egypt. Wouldn't claim this woman at that time. He said, all those people that you brought out of Egypt, they've done what? Have corrupted themselves. They are defiled by another. Go ahead. They've turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. Uh-huh. So they've broken the covenant. Go ahead. They've made them a molten uh, calf, uh -huh. and have worshipped it, and have sacrificed thereunto, uh -huh. and said, These be the gods who is real. That's what they said. These be the gods that did what? Which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Uh -huh. And the Lord said unto Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. I've seen this woman, and she is not right. She is stiff-necked. She is stiff-necked. Let's go to uh, Deuteronomy, the 32nd chapter. Deuteronomy, the 32nd chapter. Deuteronomy, the 32nd chapter. Because one thing about God, he's a jealous God. He wants you to serve him and only him. Israel didn't have a mind. This is Deuteronomy, the 32nd chapter, and the 15th verse. 32 and verse, you know what? Just pick it up at verse 8. Let's read to it. Verse 8. And when you're there, go ahead. When the Most High divided into the nations their inherit, uh -huh. when he separated the sons of Adam, go ahead. he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. Right. So that's why you had 12 hours in a day, 12 hours in a night, 12 months in a year. These are the bounds that separate us. He said, when the Most High divided the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people. These are bounds according to the number of the children of Israel. Go ahead. For the Lord's portion is his feet. Uh -huh. Jacob is a lot of his inheritance. Right. He found him in the desert land and in the waste howling wilderness. Uh -huh. He led him about. He instructed him. Uh -huh. He kept him as the apple of his eye. So this is what he did for this people. But what happened to this, this nation? Verse 15. But Jeshurun waxed fat and uh -huh. kicked. 
that are waxing fat, that are grown thick. You know how I say you starting to smell yourself? That's how this woman is. But just around wax fat and kit, thou art waxing fat or become fat. Thou art grown thick. Can I say that to you now? You think you're cute. Go ahead. That are covered with fat. Uh huh. Then he forsook God which made him. Then you forsook the one who brought you everything you have. Go ahead. And lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. They showed God no honor. Go ahead. They provoked him to jealousy with strange God. He said he's a jealous God. He's a jealous God. Go ahead. But abominations provoke they him to anger. It's just like any man would want to see his wife looking at another man, let alone stepping out on him with another man. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. Who is this catching with? Same thing here. With abominations provoked they him to anger. Go ahead. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God. Uh huh. To gods whom they knew not. Uh huh. New gods that came newly up whom their fathers feared not. So they were constantly dealing with the false gods that were among the people of the, of the other nations. Baal, Molech, all these other false gods. They, got, they were worshiping every, any and everything. The queen of heaven, all these other gods. This is what this woman did. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God. The gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up whom your fathers now, go ahead. For the rock that begot thee, uh -huh. that are unmindful, and has forgotten God that formed thee. Uh -huh. So you've forgotten what he did. He's the one that formed you. Go ahead. And when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them. So when he saw it, he hated. He hated. Go ahead. Because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters. Uh -huh. And he said, I will hide my face from them. So I'm going to hide my face from them. Go ahead. I will see what their end shall be. I'm going to see what's going to happen to this woman. Go ahead. For they are a very forward generation. Uh -huh. Children in whom is no faith. He called them perverse. He said, a children in whom is no faith. 21. They moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. Uh -huh. They provoked me to anger with their vanity. Go ahead. And I will move them to jealousy. With those which are not a people. Since you've done this to me, since you made me jealous, I'm gonna make you jealous. He said, I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. Go ahead. I will provoke them to anger with the foolish nation. Uh-huh. And that's why all the other nations look down on us. That's why we look at them and want what they have. Because the Lord has set it up that way. Because we have been perverse in our dealings. With our God. We moved him to jealousy. Verse 22. For a fire is kindled in my anger. So a fire is kindled in my anger and it's burning. Go ahead. It shall burn into the Lord's hell. Uh -huh. And shall consume the earth with her increase. Uh -huh. And set on fire the foundations of the mountain. Man, I'm going to bring decimation upon you. Verse uh, 26. When you there, go ahead. Because what's going to happen to you? I said I will scatter them into corn. Uh -huh. I will make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. And that's how this woman who was supposed to be a peculiar treasure upon all the nations of the earth. That's how this woman is sitting low, a few in number, where before she had increased. Went from 75 to hundreds of thousands. Now you are few in number among your enemies and you don't even know who you are. You don't know who you once were. That's what God can do. He said, I said, I will scatter them into corners. I will make the remembrance of them to cease from among me. You don't even know who you are. But let's go to uh, Ezekiel. Let's go to Ezekiel. Because God gave us, gave this woman everything she had. Ezekiel 1. We're going to find out what she trusted in. Ezekiel 1. Ezekiel, oh, excuse me, Ezekiel, thank you, Ezekiel 16. Ezekiel 16, thank you. Ezekiel 16, and we're going to start at verse 1. Ezekiel 16 and 1, when you're there, go ahead. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying. So the word of the Lord came to this prophet, go ahead. Son of man, uh -huh. cause Jerusalem to know her abomination. Tell this woman about herself. Go ahead. And say, thus said the Lord God unto Jerusalem, uh -huh. Thy birth and thy nativity is the land of Canaan. Uh -huh. Thy father was an Amorite, uh -huh. and thy mother an Hittite. Hold your finger there. And go to Deuteronomy 7. I just want to read something quick. Deuteronomy 7. Hold your finger there in Ezekiel. It's 
So we'll know what he's saying. He said, Thus said the Lord God unto Jerusalem, thy birth and thy nativity is of the land of Canaan. Thy father was an Amorite, thy mother and a Hittite. But let's see what that is, because he's not saying literally that's your lineage. But verse uh, 1, Deuteronomy 7 and verse 1, so we understand what he's saying. When you're there, go ahead. Deuteronomy 7 and 1. When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land where the light goes to possess it. So Moses is telling them, yeah, you're in the wilderness now, but when you go into this land, go ahead. And has cast out many nations before thee. Who are the nations in this land? The Hittites and the Girgashites, uh -huh. and the Amorites and the Canaanites, uh -huh. and the Pezrezites and the Hivites, uh -huh. and the Jezreelites, seven nations greater and mightier than thou. So that's who he's talking about when he says, Thus saith the Lord God unto Israel, thy birth and thy nativity is, a, is of the land of Canaan. Thy father was an Amorite and thy mother and Hittite, meaning you got you received their lands. And that's how your nation was started. Back to Ezekiel 16 and verse 4. Ezekiel 16 and verse 4. When you there, go ahead. And it's for thy nativity. And for your nativity. And your birth, how were you? In the day that thou was born, thy navel was not cut. Your navel wasn't even cut when you were born. Go ahead. Neither was thou washed in water to suffer thee. As a baby, your navel wasn't cut. Neither were you washed to suckle you or to cleanse you. So you just born out there. Just a baby born, navel not cut, not even washed of the blood of the birth. But go ahead. Thou was not salted at all. You were not salted at all. Go ahead. Nor swaddled at all. Nor cared for at all. Go ahead. None I pity thee. Nobody cared about you. Like when I was talking about this woman who thinks she's cute. Go ahead. To do any of these things unto thee, uh -huh. to have compassion upon thee, uh -huh. but thou was cast out into the open field, uh -huh. to the loathing of thy person in the day that thou was born. So that's your birth. That's that's your past. You came from them. Go ahead. And when I passed by thee, and what did he see? And saw thee polluted in thine own blood. So you polluted in your own blood. Go ahead. I said unto thee, when thou was in thy blood, live, uh -huh. gay. I said unto thee, when I was in thy blood, live. Meaning I came to you, and I cleaned you off. I cut your neck. I swallowed you. I salted you. Go ahead. I caused thee to multiply as the bud of the field. And I caused you to multiply. This is what God has done for this woman. Go ahead. And thou hast increased and waxing great. And thou art come to excellent order. Uh -huh. Thy breasts are fashioned, uh -huh. and thy hair is grown, uh -huh. whereas thou was naked and bare. So he likens it to a physical appearance, what he has done. That's what he said, thy breasts are fashioned now, and thy hair is grown. So he said, this woman is starting to look good now. Like I said, she thinks she cute. Thy breasts are fashioned, thy hair is grown, whereas at first, what, you were what? Was naked and bare. You was naked and bald-headed when I met you. That's what he's saying. Go ahead. Now when I passed by thee and looked upon thee, uh -huh. behold, thy time was a time of love. And I brought myself unto you. Go ahead. And I spread my skirt over thee. And I secured you. Go ahead. And covered thy neck in thee. Uh -huh. Yea, I swear unto thee, and entered into a covenant with thee. We read about that covenant in Exodus, the 24th chapter, in Exodus, the 19th chapter, which was the proposal. He said, I swear unto thee, I swear unto thee, and entered into a covenant with thee. Go ahead. Said the Lord God, uh -huh. and I became his mind. And you became mine. And what else did this God do? Then washed thee I with water. Yea, I thoroughly washed away thy blood from thee. Uh -huh. And I anointed thee with oil. He says, so I washed thee with water. He washed this woman and this nation with the word of God. No other nation has the God of heaven and earth came to and showed himself and manifested himself unto no other people. He said, then washed I thee with water, yea, I thoroughly washed away thy blood from thee, and I anointed thee with oil. Go ahead. I clothed thee also with broader work, uh -huh. and shod thee with badger skin. Uh -huh. I girded thee above with fine linen, Go and ahead. I covered thee with silk. Go ahead. I decked thee also with ornaments, and I put bracelets upon thine hands, and a chain on thy neck. So I'm giving you everything. I'm giving you all the best. I decked thee with ornaments, bracelets, chains. Fine linen and silk. Go ahead. Now I put a jewel on thy forehead and earrings in thine ears. So I put an earring in your nose. That's what he said, forehead. He's talking about your nose. I put an earring in your nose, earrings in your ears, and a what? And a beautiful crown upon thine head. And a beautiful crown upon thine head. Go ahead. 
Thou was decked with gold and silver, and thy raiment was of fine linen and silk and broad and work. Uh -huh. Thou didst eat fine flour and honey and oil. Uh -huh. and thou was exceedingly beautiful. Go ahead. And thou didst prosper into a king. So I brought you into a king. I brought you from something into nothing. You didn't even live in a house, now you're living in a mansion. Well, verse 14. And I renowned went forth among the heathen for thy beauty. Uh -huh. For it was perfect through my comeliness. So he said, and I renowned, right? You became famous. You became the one that other nations looked up to. And that 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 uh that went throughout all the surrounding nations. Thy renowned went forth among the heathen, those that didn't know God, for thy beauty. He said you were supposed to be a peculiar treasure and to be above all the nations of the earth. So the heathen are looking at you. He says something. He says, for it was perfect through my comeliness. You look good because of me. That's what he's telling this woman. Not because of you. Not because of something you've done. Rather because of the God of heaven and earth who is perfect. Therefore, you look good. Go ahead. Which I put upon thee, said the Lord God. Uh huh. But see, what does she trust in? Because she's looking good, so she can look in the mirror now, but she think what? But thou didst trust in thine own beauty. She thought she was beautiful because of some she did. Go ahead. And play as the harlots because of thy renown. So she thinks she's cute. Now she's going to play with some other gods. See, see, this is a grave and terrible thing that we've done. But go ahead. And pours out thy fornications on every one. That passes by, here's it was. Here's it was. All the other guys. Just like a woman, if she was stepping out with everybody else, that was men. This woman, this nation, is stepping out with all these false gods. All just fornicate. Everyone that passed by, here's it was. Go ahead. And of thy garments, thou didst say, uh -huh. and decked thy high places with divers colors, uh -huh. and players the hog thereupon. The like things shall not come, neither shall it be so. And all the things that she was given, she started taking these things and, and giving them to these false gods. It says, And of thy garments thou didst take and decadest thy high places with thy verse comes, and playedest the harlot, spiritual harlot. Go ahead. Thou hast also taken thy fair jewels of my gold and of my silver, which I have given thee. Which who gave her? Which I have given thee. He said, Which I have given you. You didn't work for that. He said, I gave it to you, and then what? And made to thyself images of men, and did us commit hoarding with them. Uh-huh, And ahead. took these thy broadened garments and covered them, and thou hast set mine oil and mine incense before them. So all the things I gave, the oil, the incense, the gold, the silver, the garments, you took all those things and gave them to another. Go ahead. My meat also, which I gave thee, uh -huh. fine flour and oil and honey, uh -huh. but with I fed thee, uh -huh. thou hast even set it before them for a sweet savior. For thus it was, said the Lord God. So can you imagine, can you imagine this? <laughs> Seriously, think about it. A brother that's working a nine to five, just barely making it, would be irate if something like, can you imagine you have everything and you give it to this one that's nothing, and then she go and give it to some other, some other guy? Can you imagine that? I don't have nothing. And I, I was, hey, I'll be going crazy. This is God. This is God that we did this to. He said, my meat also which I gave thee, fine flour and honey, wherewith I fed thee, thou hast even set it before them for a sweet sake. And thus it was, saith the Lord God. What else did this woman do in her holiday? Go ahead. Verse 20. Uh -huh. Moreover, thou hast taken thy sons and thy daughters, uh -huh. whom thou hast born before me. So you took my children, love you. And these that thou sacrificed unto them to be devoured. Is this a, is this of thy whoredoms a small matter? So you took and you sacrificed your kids unto false gods. See, that's what they would do to the God of Molech. They would sacrifice their children. Oh, and worse. Go ahead. That thou hast slain my children uh -huh. and delivered them to cause them to pass through the fire. Go ahead. To pass through the fire for them. Uh -huh. And in all thine abominations and thy whoredoms, thou hast not remembered the days of thy youth uh -huh. when thou was naked and bare. You don't remember how I found you, woman. He said, You don't remember how I found you. I found you, you were naked and bare. Got a lot of nerve. 
Go ahead. And was polluted in thy blood. Uh -huh. And it came to pass of all thy wickedness. Uh -huh. Woe, woe unto thee, said the you Lord God. Out, you out there bad. You committed all kind of adultery. But go ahead, verse 24. That thou also hast built unto thee an intimate place and hast made thee a high place in every street. And has made a high place in every street. And that's how we are today, even in our neighborhoods. High place in every street. Places of false worship throughout this woman. She's still in this adult. But uh, skip down to verse, uh, this, thank you, 28. When you let go ahead. Thou hast played the whore also with his Syrian, uh -huh. because thou was insatiable. Yea, thou hast played the harlot with them, and yet couldst not be satisfied. Couldn't get enough. Could not get enough. Now you're dealing with these Assyrians and their God. Couldn't get enough. Unquenchable lust. Go ahead. For thou, idolatry. Go ahead. Thou hast moreover multiplied thy fornication in the land of Canaan uh -huh. unto Chaldea, uh -huh. and yet thou was not satisfied herewith. So the gods of Babylon, the Babylonians, you dealing with them. You dealing with the other other walls of Chaldea, Canaan unto Chaldea, and yet thou was not satisfied herewith. Then he says something about this woman's mind. Go ahead. He said, "How weak is thine heart?" said the Lord God. How weak is your mind? Go ahead. Seeing thou, seeing thou doest all these things, the work of an imperious, whorish woman. Call this woman a whore. Go ahead. And that thou buildest thine intimate place in the head of every way, uh -huh. and makest thy high place in every street, uh -huh. and has not been as a harlot, and that thou scornest higher. You're not even like a normal prostitute. A normal prostitute does it for money. You scorn her, you hate her, you don't want no money. What are you doing? But as a wife that committed adultery, uh -huh. which taken strangers instead of a husband. You are like a wife that's taken in adultery, that's dealing with strangers instead of a husband. And what do you do? Verse 33. They give gift to all who. Uh -huh. But thou givest thy gifts to all thy lovers. He said they give gifts. So those that are dealing with a prostitute will come with money, will come with a gift. You read in Genesis around the 38th chapter, you read about Judah who was doing some immoral things. You read about him when he dealt with his uh, sister, or his daughter-in-law, because he thought she was a harlot. What did he do? He offered her a goat. He said, hey, take this kid for that service. He thought she was a harlot. That's what men do today that dealing with prostitutes. Whether it's 20 bucks or 20 thousand. He said, they give gifts to all whores. But thou give us thy gifts to all our lovers, but you give them gifts. He said, how weak is your mind? He said, you give them gifts and high risk them to defile you. So you take everything that God has given you and give it to them. Go ahead. That they may come unto thee on every side for thy whore. Uh -huh. And the contrary is indeed from other women in thy whore. Mm -hmm. Whereas none followeth thee to commit order. Uh -huh. And then that thou givest a reward, and no reward is given unto thee. Uh -huh. Therefore thou art contrary. You say you contrary, you different. Something. You how weak is your mind? But let's go to uh let's go to Jeremiah. What's that? Jeremiah 32. Oh, thank you. Hosea. Thank you. Hosea 2. Because he talked about Assyria and he talked about Chaldea. Israel, because we know that after, the, after Solomon died, the nation was split into two. And the northern nation was called, the northern half of the nation, the northern portion was called Israel. They didn't just refer to Israel or even Egypt. And the south was referred to as Judah. Okay? So here we see this prophet Hosea who was sent unto, the, unto that northern king. Let's see what he said to this one. Hosea 2 and verse 1. Hosea 2 and verse 1. Because the Lord came to him and he said, go take thee a wife of thy horse. In other words, take you a wife of these children of Israel. Take you a woman out of that land. And then they had children. And then he's, he's doing all this for a sign. That's in, in chapter 1. We'll go to uh, 2 and 1. And when you're there, go ahead. 
Say you didn't tell your brother I have mine. Uh -huh. To your sister's real mom. Uh -huh. Plead with your mother. Plead for she is not my wife. Uh -huh. So he's talking symbolically. He's likening this to the relationship between God and his, and his children. He said plead with your mother. Talking to the children. Plead with your mother for she's not been my wife. Go ahead. Neither am I her husband. She's not my wife. I'm not her husband. Go ahead. Let her therefore put away her whoredoms out of her sight uh -huh. and her adulteries from between her breasts. And how could she be my wife truly if she's committing all this whoredom and adul adultery? You're not doing what a wife should do. But go ahead, verse 3. Please I'll strip her naked and set her as in the day that she was born. She forgot about that day when she was naked in bed. Go ahead. And make her as a wilderness and set her like a dry land and slay her with thirst. Go ahead. And I will not have mercy upon her children. But they be the children of whore. Right, so those that are born, those future generations, they just the children of the whore. He said, I will not have mercy upon her children. I'm going to cast them into slavery. Go ahead. For their mother had played the harp. Uh -huh. She that conceived them have done shamefully. Uh -huh. But she said, I will go after my lovers uh -huh. that give me my bread and my water, my wool and my flax, my wool and my drink. Well, we already know who was giving her that. Her true husband. Verse 6. Therefore, behold, I will hedge up thy way with thorns, uh -huh. and make a wall that she should not find her path. So I'm going to make it real hard for us. One thing in the physical realm, you're dealing with a physical man, there's only so much he can do. But this is God. He's everywhere. He can, he can kick you wherever you at. He said, therefore, behold, I will hedge up the way with thorns. I'm going to make it real difficult for you. Just how I made it to where you were delivered from this great nation. I'll make it to none of your ways prosper. He said, I'm gonna make, I will hedge up the way with thorns and make a wall that she shall not find her path. She's gonna grow. Like one groping in darkness. Go ahead. And she shall follow after her lover. Uh -huh. But she shall not overtake them. Uh -huh. And she shall seek them, but shall not find them. Go ahead. Then shall she say, I will go and return to my first husband. Uh -huh. But then it was, but then was it better with me than now. So after she's treated badly. For her unrighteousness. She's going to try to go to her husband's husband. Go ahead. But she did not know that I gave her corn and wine and wool. Uh -huh. And multiplied her silver and gold. Which they prepared for bad. Right. She didn't realize that I'm the one that gave her those things. Verse uh, 9. Therefore will I return and take away my corn in the time thereof. Uh -huh. And my wine in the season thereof. Uh -huh. And will recover my wool and my flax. Given to cover her neck. So all those things that we have as, or had as a nation, God gave it to us. And God could just as easily take it away. And that's what he said he was going to do. Go ahead. Verse 10. And now will I discover her lewdness in the sight of her lovers. Uh -huh. And none shall deliver her out of my hand. And I'm going to discover her lewdness. And I'm going to, for the world to see her discretion. And now will I discover her lewdness in the sight of her lovers. And none shall deliver her out of my hand. So he said, I'm going to punish this woman. And nobody's going to help. Let's go to uh, verse, uh, oh, excuse me, oh, Ezekiel, the 23rd chapter. Ezekiel, the 23rd chapter. Ezekiel, the 23rd chapter. Ezekiel, the 23rd chapter. Because that's what he said what was going to happen to Israel, that northern kingdom. And you read in 2 Kings, the 17th chapter, you read about Hosea, the, or Hosea, the last king of uh, that nation. Around 721, 722, what happened? They were taken into captivity, those 10 tribes, by the Assyrians. So he did just what he said he was going to do. So now the southern portion, the southern kingdom, is looking at that. Judah is looking at what happened to the northern Kingdom. So that's what happened when Judah saw Israel's demise. Ezekiel 23 and verse 1. Ezekiel 23 and verse 1, when you're there, go ahead. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, uh -huh. Son of man, uh -huh. there were two women, the daughters of one mother, and they committed whoredoms in Egypt. Uh -huh. They committed whoredoms in their youth. Uh -huh. There were their breasts pressed, and there were, they bruised the tits of their virginity. Uh -huh. So they are in, in just constant adultery. And he's talking about these two daughters. The one is Israel and the other is Judah. They comprise the whole nation. We'll go ahead. And the names of them were Horla, the elder, uh -huh. and Ahoabah, her sister. And they were mine. They bear sons and daughters. 
Thus were their names Samaria is Horlah and Jerusalem a Horlah. Right, so we know again that's what that's represent. The two the two nations or the two uh the northern and the southern part of the nation. Go ahead, verse five. Verse five. And a and a played the harlot 